the city where hope springs eternal. It is a city that is proud of its ancient glorious heritage, a city that once expanded its empire throughout Europe, Africa, and Asia. Rome is a city drenched in history and Christianity. First-time visitors may be easily overwhelmed by all this magnificent city has to offer. After all, one can find history and art on almost every street corner. That's why visitors may want to do their homework to narrow down what they want to see and do before they get on a plane or train bound for the Italian capital. Unfortunately, it's not possible to see all the top tourist attractions in Rome in a few days or even a few months. Wise travelers won't even attempt to see everything in one trip. To ensure they'll return to Rome, they'll toss a coin into the Fountain of Trevi. Legend has it that those who do will return to Rome again. You'll be able to choose the best places to visit with our handy list of the top attractions in Rome. Before continuing the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss our new travel guide videos. 1. A Colosseum and the Arch of Constantine As the Eiffel Tower is to Paris, the silhouette of the Flavian Amphitheater is to Rome. The largest structure left to us by Roman antiquity, the Colosseum still provides the model for sports arenas. Present-day football stadium design is clearly based on this oval Roman plan. The building was begun by Vespasian in 72 AD, and after his son Titus enlarged it by adding the fourth story, it was inaugurated in the year 80 AD with a series of splendid games. The Colosseum was large enough for theatrical performances, festivals, circuses, or games, which the imperial court and high officials watched from the lowest level. Aristocratic Roman families on the second, the populace on the third and fourth. Beside the Colosseum stands the almost equally familiar Arch of Constantine, a triumphal arch erected by the Senate to honor the Emperor. As liberator of the city and bringer of peace, after his victory in the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312. 2. Vatican City Even though it's located in Rome, Vatican City has been an independent state since 1929 with its own flag, coins and stamps. It even has its own militia, the Swiss Guard, which protects this state, the Pope, and the 800 full-time citizens and visiting residents. The first impressive site is St. Peter's Square itself designed by Bernini in the late 17th century. As long as you're dressed appropriately, no bare shoulders or shorts or skirts above the knee, you may enter St. Peter's Basilica and see Michelangelo's Pietà, a stunningly beautiful and sad sculpture. Continue up to the roof where you can take in the view of the large square and city beyond. Also contained in the Vatican's walls, the Vatican Museums hold Italian masterpieces, including Michelangelo's painted ceiling at the Sistine Chapel. 3. The Pantheon The mighty Pantheon stands as one of the best preserved ancient Roman buildings in the world and is one of Rome's most famous attractions. Constructed in 118 AD by Emperor Hadrian, the building that stands today was actually built on the site where an earlier temple stood that was commissioned by Agrippa. At the front of the building stands a rectangular porch lined with huge columns and a dedication to Agrippa on the triangular pediment. The interior features a magnificent gnome that has a series of stone patterns and a central coffer that allows light to spill through. In the Pantheon, you can also see the tombs of Raphael, the famous artist, and Victor Emmanuel Roman II, first king of Italy. Located in the center of Rome on the Piazza della Rotonda, the Pantheon should be a true highlight and is another must-visit. 4. Roman Forum The Roman Forum is a rectangular plaza surrounded by the ruins of ancient Roman government buildings which are situated in the city center of Rome. For centuries this place was the center of everyday life in Rome. It held elections, processions, speeches, and even gladiator matches. Everything was happening here. You can also see statues of the great Roman emperors dotted around the plaza. Today, the Forum is a large ruin of bits and pieces of ancient Roman architecture and excavations. Like a lot of Roman developments, after the fall of the Roman Empire, the site fell into disrepair. It was used as pastoral land during the Middle Ages, where it would be dug up for marble and stone. Rediscovered in 1803, it took 100 years to clear the area. Therefore, it wasn't fully excavated until the early 20th century. Today, excavations are still ongoing. We think that visiting Rome without walking around the Roman Forum is like going to Paris without visiting the Eiffel Tower. It's a must-see. 5. Trevi Fountain A must-see on many travelers' itineraries. The Trevi Fountain is situated amongst a high concentration of hotels, shopping, and nightlife. Finished in the mid-1700s, the Trevi is a powerful example of a Baroque design with a distinctly mythological character. 
the god of the sea, Oceanus, emerges from the pool, flanked by his trusty tridents. The fountain underwent an extensive, multi-million euro restoration and reopened in its full splendor in November 2015. According to Roman lore, throwing one, two, or three coins into the trevi, with your right hand over your left shoulder ensures you'll return to Rome, you'll fall in love with an attractive Roman, and you'll marry that same Roman. 6. The Spanish Steps You definitely can't go to Rome and miss out on seeing this world-famous attraction. What's different and somewhat a shame nowadays though is that due to the new municipal rules, or gaspos, it's actually prohibited to sit on the stairs. This is to ensure decorum, security and legality by banning actions that threaten historic decorum of Rome. You can even get fined 400 euros for sitting. So be aware of these new rules. Until these rules were enforced, the Spanish Steps were a place where locals and tourists alike would sit and eat, drink coffee, and was regarded as a place to be seen. In fact, many women would sit here and hope to be seen as muses for artists. They were built in the classical Roman Baroque style during the years of 1723 to 1725. There are 138 steps made up of curves, flights, and terraces connecting the lower pies of the Spagna to the upper pies of Trinita de Monte. They were financed by Etienne Geffier, a French diplomat, and they've been included as a backdrop in many famous fashion shows, films, and photo shoots, most famously the 1953 film Roman Holiday. So even if you can't chill at the steps and enjoy your ice cream, definitely check them out anyway. They're one of the most photographed places in Rome. 7. Piazza Navona Defined during the 15th century, the Baroque-style Piazza Navona is one of the most charming and popular squares in Rome. This public square is built on the site where the Stadium of Domitian, founded in 86 AD, once stood. It could hold approximately 20,000 spectators, which came here to see different athletic competitions. The most beautiful parts of Piazza Navona are its three fountains, designed during the papacy of Gregory XIII. The square is surrounded by restaurants and terraces giving Piazza Navona a lively and delightful atmosphere during the day. Here, visitors can enjoy performances by street artists like magicians and dancers. The most imposing buildings which look onto the square are the Church of St. Ignis in Agon and the Palazzo Pamphilj. 8. Palatine Hill Palatine Hill is one of the most ancient areas in modern Rome and is the central most hill in the Tiber region standing 40 meters above the historical Roman Forum. It provides a fantastic viewing position, and from here you can see the expanse of Rome laid out before your eyes. In Roman mythology, this is the location where the legendary Romulus and Remus were supposedly found, who then went on to build the city of Rome. Several structures still stand on this site today, including the Flavian Palace and the Temple of Cybele. Admission to the Roman Forum includes access to Palatine Hill, so ensure you make the climb and visit this fantastic viewpoint. 9. Villa Borghese Gallery and Gardens One of Rome's largest parks, the Borghese Gardens contain a number of attractions that include two museums, the most prominent of which is the Villa Borghese. Built as a party villa and housed the Borghese Art Collection, the gallery contains paintings, sculptures, mosaics, and reliefs most from the 15th to the 18th century, and include works by Raphael, Titian, Caravaggio, and Rubens. Elsewhere in the park, Villa Giulia was built as a summer residence for the 16th century Pope. Julius III and houses the Etruscan Museum. More villas are from the World Exposition that was held in Rome in 1911. The park is an English-style landscape garden with walking paths and ponds where you can rent rowboats. You can also rent bikes or a surrey to explore the park. There is a good zoo. Bioparco di Roma, with naturalized enclosures and a miniature trail connecting its various sections. A number of its attractions will appeal to children, including playgrounds, weekend pony rides, and occasional puppet shows. 10. Castel Sant'Angelo, also known as Hadrian's Tomb. This stunning fortress is situated on the right-hand side of the Tiber and not too far from the Vatican. Emperor Hadrian started construction in 135 and was intended to be used as a mausoleum for himself and his family. Over time, the ashes of other emperors were entombed here. It also became a building for the military, a prison and a fortress. These days it's used as a museum containing a large collection of paintings, sculpture and medieval artifacts. You can access it via the Alien Bridge, which was completed in 134 AD by Hadrian himself in order to span the Tiber to his brand new mausoleum. 
This grand marble bridge is lined with 10 stunning angel sculptures designed by Bernini. While we recommend going here if you have heaps of time in Rome, we wouldn't bother going out of the way if you only have a few days. Still, it's such an iconic building that it's definitely nice to walk past it, along the Tiber at least.